What's up everyone? Next up we have Pseudo Wudo. This Pokemon is of course well known for being the mysterious tree obstacle that players had to water with the squirt bottle before they could reach Ecrutic City in Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal. And of course Brock also had a Pseudo Wudo that he evolved from Bonslide. Today we'll be examining how Pseudo Wudo fared in the competitive scene. So how good was Pseudo Wudo actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Pseudo Wudo was unfortunately not able to make any sort of impact in its debut generation's OU. Rock typing and high defense seems appealing as a stop to Snorlax, but sadly, it's still outclassed by the other three rocks in the tier, which are Tyranitar, Golem, and Rhydon. Titar has slightly lower defense, but far higher HP, meaning it takes physical attacks noticeably better. Golem has slightly better HP and significantly higher defense, and Rhydon has even higher HP than Tyranitar and Golem's defense. And those three aren't just better statistically, but also in typing and move pool as well. Tyranitar's part dark typing grants it a highly useful immunity to Psychic, while Golem and Rhydon's ground typing gives them an invaluable electric immunity. This allowed them to check other key Pokemon, which Pseudo Wudo was unable to do. In terms of move pool, all three were able to use Roar, which allowed them to actually handle Curse Lax. Pseudo Wudo really couldn't do much other than explode and try to take Snorlax down with it, which isn't a reliable strategy and especially bad news since it meant Pseudo Wudo couldn't even handle the one Pokemon it was meant to. Pseudo Wudo's access of curse and self-destruct was unique among rock types as Golem was relegated to using explosion defensively instead of with boost to take out a wall since it also had to fit rapid spin into its moveset. However, Pseudo Wudo was outdone at its curse boom roll by Steelix, who wasn't a rock but still had that crucial normal resistance alongside Roar, both necessary necessary to thwart the almighty Snorlax while also having amazing immunities to Thunder and Toxic that gave it utility against other Pokemon. And Steelix also got to use the far superior explosion and thus hit harder with its boom despite its lower attack stat. There was just no place for Pseudo Wudo in OU, but it did have a decent place in UU since normal resists were in short supply and Grand Bull was dangerous. The lack of normal resists also worked to Pseudo Wudo's advantage in that its self-destruct was nearly guaranteed to take something out while keeping the few Pokemon that did resist normal, such as Haunter, and other rocks away with Earthquake. However, it wasn't able to check much else. Pseudo Wudo's self-destruct didn't really need Curse to take something out, and for this reason, it was generally outclassed by Graveler, who could rapid spin before blowing up. Pseudo Wudo's ability to fit Rock Slide on its moveset didn't help much, since its main target, Scyther, would just baton pass its Swords Dance out. And thus, Pseudo Wudo dropped to Enyu, as did Graveler. But Pseudo Wudo's ability to fit Rock Slide on its moveset was more important important this time given the presence of Firo and Zatu, so their pros and cons weren't nearly as skewed. Pseudo Wudo's lack of a quadruple grass and water weakness meant that it wasn't dead to random coverage hidden power from something like Flareon either. Overall, it was a decent niche, so at least our happy fake tree friend finally got something in its debut generation. Generation 3 saw Pseudo Wudo gain explosion, as well as fighting type coverage in Brick Break and Focus Punch. It appreciated the immediate power the new choice band offered as well. Sadly, these were nowhere near what it required to make it viable in OU. It wasn't just that Tyranitar now reigned and that Aerodactyl was a massive threat, making for massive competition that overshadowed even Rhydon. It was that Pseudo Wudo was completely and utterly outclassed in every conceivable way by Regirock, who had the same attack stat, the same offensive of moves, as well as other goodies like Super Power, Thunder Wave, and Curse, which Pseudo Wudo had lost in the generational shift, a better HP stat, Sky High Defense, and a far better Special Defense stat. Pseudo Wudo has never been used in OU for this reason, and it's unfortunately no good in UU either, as there it's outclassed by Soul Rock, who despite its lower defense is a far better check to Kangaskhan, as it packs an Earthquake immunity and is unaffected by Spikes, which also makes it a better counter to Fearow. Unlike Hubble, Tops and Agron, Pseudo Wudo is not so superior offensively that it's worth using over Soul Rock and losing this incredibly important defensive utility. Kangaskhan and Fero are some of the most dangerous Pokemon in UU. Thus, Pseudo Wudo found itself in NU again, and at least there it was a fine choice bander. It separated itself from Graveler with its lack of a quadruple grass or water weakness, which gave it more space to operate in a metagame with these two Pokemon around every corner. By being able to take a hit from them, Pseudo Wudo could finish them off if they switched into it, or 
it could just blow them up in a one-on-one, -on -one, thus making it quite an effective wall breaker. Bandit Pseudo Wudo could also function as a great lead. It prevented Glalie from getting free spikes while also scaring out Flareon and Venomoth, thus giving its user offensive tempo to start off the game. Pseudo Wudo was also excellent with a substitute focus punch set. While the choice band set could be played around by predicting which move Pseudo Wudo would lock itself into and sending in a resist, it was much more difficult to do so when Pseudo Wudo was hiding behind the security of a substitute. This meant it could get an explosion off on its desired target far more easily. Overall, Pseudo Wudo was NU once more, but this time it was significantly improved, and as a result, was one of the tier's most dangerous threats. It was the same sad story for Pseudo Wudo in Gen 4. OU had Tyranitar, UU had several great rock types such as Rhyperior, Omastar, and Regirock, and as a result, Pseudo Wudo with its overall inferior stat spread wound up in NU once more. While Regirock was also NU, Pseudo Wudo gained a few new moves that meant it was no longer completely outclassed, instead filling an entirely unique niche and being able to pull it off in spite of its terrible speed thanks to the tier's low power level. The first of these moves was Wood Hammer. This was hugely important as it allowed Pseudo Wudo to absolutely shatter bulky waters like Slow King that usually countered rocks since it also crushed other rock types and by actually packing even more power than Earthquake it could drop EQ and thus Wood Hammer effectively didn't take up an extra slot to add this move to Pseudo Wudo's set and it didn't even take recoil thanks to its rock head ability. The second move was Sucker Punch. Having such a powerful priority move helped Pseudo Wudo use its solid 100 attack stat consistently, bypassing its speed and hitting faster, frailer Pokemon that would normally beat it, most notably Jinx. This made Pseudo Wudo incredibly difficult to wall, and as such it was excellent at breaking through bulkier teams, especially as it packed the always dangerous explosion for the few Pokemon it couldn't beat, namely Tangrowth. It could go with a straightforward choice band set, which packed impressive power against even Resist that didn't pack a good amount of bulk, but it could also support its team by using Stealth Rock on forced switches without losing too much of offensive efficiency. It didn't threaten as sure a KO on Slow King with Wood Hammer, but Slow King would still be wary of switching in, and being able to switch moves also removed much of the opponent's ability to play around Pseudo Wudo's moves with prediction. Explosion would also still remove just about any non-resist. Pseudo Wudo was once more a great and new Pokemon, this time with quite a lot of style to its game, as its unique moves allowed it to provide an excellent style of offense nothing else could truly replicate. Once more, Pseudo Woodle wound up in NU. OU had Tyranitar, UU had Rhyperior, and RU had a bunch of Pokemon. NU also had Regirock, which was used far more due to the necessity of its greater defensive niche to thwart Charizard, since there was no longer Slow King to take up that role alongside Pseudo Woodle, like how they did in the fourth generation. Kangaskhan was also an immensely threatening Pokemon that was difficult to hold off outside of Regirock. Pseudo Woodle's Woodhammer niche was still existent and potentially useful, given the popularity of the tier's common rock switch-ins, being the massively vulnerable Alomomola and Golurk, but it was a lot more difficult to fit onto a team given its significant defensive inferiority, leaving many difficult to plug holes in its team. The nerf to Explosion meant Pseudo Woodle couldn't even come close to breaking past Eviolite Tangula either. It was just too difficult to make use of more often than not. The niche was there, but just barely, and for the first time, Pseudo Woodle was generally passed over by NU players. It came as no surprise to anyone who even bothered thinking about Pseudo Wudo in Generation 6 that it was not seen in OU, UU, RU, or even NU, because now there was a tier even below the one that had been Pseudo Wudo's home for the entirety of its existence up to this point, that being PU, where the players of which were likely the only ones in the 6th generation who ever gave Pseudo Wudo a thought regarding competitive use. Unfortunately, that thought usually wound up being that Pseudo Wudo was outclassed by Golem and Provopass. The former's electric immunity, as well as Stab Earthquake, complementing its Rock Stab, coming off of a higher attack stat, gave it more use on both defense and offense, while Provopass's immense defenses and numerous resistances, granted by its steel typing, allowed it to perform as a terrific pivot that could get its frailer hard-hitting teammates in easily with Volt Switch. Sudowoodle's defensive use paling in comparison to these two made it difficult for it to come in, and Woodhammer was no longer as reliable at dishing out 
out massive damage with the popularity of Gorgeist XL, Quilladin, and Eviolite Tangela. It all boiled down to the fact that if you wanted to use Sudowoodle, you did it because you liked its design, not because it was the best choice competitively, because it never was. Golem was just a better overall Pokemon on both sides of the spectrum, and if Golem wasn't to your taste, you had a superior second option in Probopass. Yeah, that's just how it tree sometimes. Sudowoodle had a glimmer of hope in Generation 7. It wasn't viable in anything above PU, but it was given the amazing move Head Smash without having the awful recoil thanks to the Rockhead ability. So perhaps it finally stood a chance at having a real niche in a tier again. Look, I know I say this a lot, but unfortunately, PU also had Aggron, which had the same combination, but with far higher attack, as well as other excellent traits like superior bulk to go alongside steel typing, which allowed Aggron to switch in and get its own head smashes off with greater ease. Pseudo Woodle's Wood Hammer allowed it to hit Mudsdale harder than Aggron's Ice Punch, sure, but this was not worth using an overall inferior Pokemon for, especially since Aggron's numerous switch in opportunities meant it would eventually break past Mudsdale anyway, while also providing defensive use. Thus, Pseudo Woodle's dreams died, especially since the tier also had numerous other better rock types, such as Lycan Rock and its splintered Storm Shards, as well as the ever threatening Shell Smash Caracosta. As a result, Sudowoodle was given the lowest of dishonors, the rank of being untiered. Sudowoodle is not deemed fit for competitive use in any Generation 7 tier. So, Sela Tree, or I should say, Sela Fake Tree because it's uh, not a real tree. And that's it. So how good was Pseudo Wudo actually? Well, it was a staple of what was the lowest non-Little Cup tier for a long time, that being NU. In Gens 2, 3, and 4, it was a fine Pokemon in the NU tier, especially in the latter two. Then sadly, the power creep of black and white meant its niche was no longer viable due to its lack of a defensive use and the holes that opened up in its team as a result of being slotted in. Things just got worse in the subsequent generations, first falling into PU and then being recognized as one of the least viable fully evolved Pokemon in the game. Pseudo Woodle is a perfect example of the type of Pokemon that needs to be given an artificial push if it ever wants to see usage again, even in the lower tiers. Thanks for watching everyone. As we all know, Pseudo Woodle is a fake tree. I mean, it's not even a grass type, it's a rock type. And that shows even in its competitive history because real trees are really strong and they are actually viable to have on this earth. Pseudo Woodle just can't quite cut it like the other tree based Pokemon such as Exeggutor and Torterra, which is why we need more of these and less of this. And also, I already did an episode on Exeggutor and Torterra, so this was the next best tree Pokemon that I could think of. That was like an earlier gen Pokemon. But anyway, all of that aside, this is totally why you should support Team Trees. Team Trees is a fundraising effort started by Mr. Beast himself in partner with the Arbor Day Foundation, where they will plant one tree for every dollar that's donated. And look, I know I'm very late to the party as this kind of started like a couple months ago, but hashtag Team trees hasn't quite made its goal yet as of this video's release. So what are you waiting for? It's a great cause to help give back to Mother Earth, fight climate change, and to show that the YouTube community can come together to do some real positive change. And I'm really glad that I'm finally doing my part to help. So be sure to go over to teamtrees.org and donate there to plant some trees. And of course, all ad revenue made off of this video will go directly to Team Trees. Thank you so much for watching everyone. As always, if you like the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And in the comments, I want to know what do you think about competitive Pseudo Wudo? Like, I know we got Dynamax now, but if you were to give it a Mega Form, would you make it a real tree? They made Charizard a dragon, so maybe they can make Pseudo Wudo. Like, I don't know, I'm rambling, whatever. And thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos. And thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.